the Face of Facts. I am Nick Face. We are here today to talk about your Stanley Cup. Boston Bruins are in the finals right now. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the NBA finals coming up too. And I have some things to say about the Red Sox too. That is how I said things to say. <laughs> but anyways, these assorted lovely cast of regulars are here again. We have cast Tom. Of clowns. Tom Smith, welcome, with his flip-flops and all, flip -flops even all. though it's still cold out. And Phil, and you, summer. did I not get the memo today? It's About, summer. Yeah, it's well, Memorial it's Day spring, weekend, right? Stanley yeah. Cup Finals have started, you know. The NBA Finals. Are Baseball's getting heated up, you know, it's yeah. time for summer. Oh, they're heated up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. The heat Let's on. lead it off first with the Bruins. So, as we're taping this show, the Bruins and the St. Louis Blues are tied in their series one game to one. We're going to break down game one, game two, and we're going to talk about our expectations for the rest of the series as well. Let's go positive first because we're a positive group of people here around here. We're going to talk about game one. The Bruins had a very nice win by a score of 5-2 to two in that victory. It came with um, some some big plays, that, that were, one of the which was Tory Crew. Everybody's still hit. talking about yeah. you know, Without a helmet, four days man. later. Yep. And we also Even Phil some, knows about I it, so you know, you know. They're 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 <laughs> and you they're also had um, a, another great goal from that fourth line, which I absolutely love, Sean Corrali. So what was your overall takeaway from game one? Game one was excellent. Yeah. Well, I, too bad it couldn't be repeated for game yeah, two. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't say excellent. I wouldn't say excellent because you know the first the first period there you, you kind of they came out the way everybody kind of expected flat. them to. A little flat, a little rusty. I mean, even Ra even Tuca looked a little slow. Um, but yeah, and then the second period you could tell that their game was coming back to them. They were getting their legs back. And then the third period came, and they came out firing. Mm -hmm. They sure did. And they could not be stopped in the third period. <clears throat> what I, did you get a chance to see any of the game? Uh, I hope bit. you say yes. Good. Yeah, sure. Good, yes, good, for good. the sake of this conversation. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah. Um, Tuca was again playing, playing like he just left off um, from the past couple series from there. But it was amazing for me to see that the Bruins were down 2-0. I was starting to get some texts from some people, some fans, and everything. Oh, I'm a little worried. And I'm like, relax. This team is great with their backs up against the wall. They'll figure it out. They'll have a good second period, and we'll be singing and dancing after game It was only a minute one. into the second period. And when we were, were correct on nothing. that. What was the problem with the Blues in the first game? Problem with the Blues in the first game? Yeah. Um, I, I would have to say that they weren't able, able to keep up with the Bruins. Okay. And you, I mean, you text me saying that, not to steal your words or anything, but no, like, I fine. agreed. I, um, I agreed with that, but um, yeah, they 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 couldn't uh, they couldn't figure out Tuca. No, they you know they couldn't keep their skating legs with the Bruins, and um, they just didn't know how to defend. They didn't know how to defend. I completely agree on that. I thought outside of really that first line not doing much in that first game. I thought your top skater of the night was Marcus Johansson. Didn't really have anything to show for it he's from been, points, but he's been great. Johansson, all, Johansson all had a great game. Yeah, a he's great been first great. Game. He's been great all playoffs. Maybe aside from the Toronto series, he was yep. a little absent from that. But um, yeah, Marcus Johansson. I, I mean, I have four, you know, MVPs of the series right now. No, I shouldn't say MVPs, but like you know, they're top the players. People who right have now. been top players. Yeah. Who's one? Uh, one is Johansson. Okay. Uh, the other is Sean Corrali. Yep. Um, the other is David Backus. Okay. And the fourth is Tori Krug. Yep. And, you know, maybe they aren't on the score sheets or anything, but, you know, they're making hits that are, like, getting the crowd excited, mm -hmm. uh, getting the team excited, getting the adrenaline going. Um, and then, you know, Corrali and Johansson are just having a great all-around game right now. I love the game one banner captains as well. They brought some of the members back from the 2011 team. Some of it consists of... Um, uh, Michael Ryder was one, Sean Thornton, uh, I think they had uh, uh, Gregory Campbell, Paye, all those kind of guys were there. So it was nice to have them in the building. Tim Thomas wasn't there. I heard he's still in his bunker. Good. But <laughs> yeah, wait for probably would have been. Still, still waiting them. for the uh, Illuminati and yeah. all that thing to come Pro about for probably him. He's afraid because minorities are about, so be careful. Probably yeah. probably would have uh, probably, probably would have, you know, helped the helped along the blues winning the game. We can talk yeah. about the minority stuff on Face the Nation, the oh, other yeah. the other show. <laughs> which we're no. pl we're planning soon. So he wait, he played his his keister off that series, but he is a weird dude. Tim sure Thomas. Is. 
But uh, no, I love Sean Thornton though. He's one of those guys. I I've missed Sean out. Thornton so much. We've yeah. talked about this. He was an identity guy. Yeah. He was. He and got, he, remember he I mean, called he out Felger last yeah. time? Yep. Or big Bad second. Bruins. Yeah. He was part of the Big Bad Bruins. Yeah. It was so, great. I guess yeah, David Backus is that guy. Is in the Sean. He's Thornton trying show. to be. He's, he's trying to he's be. He's trying to be, and he, you know, he's putting. He's leaving his. Uh, he's leaving his handprint on the Blues right now. Ah, uh, boy, does he not like the Blues, huh? Wow. Yeah. And the Blues don't like him either. <laughs> well, David Backus used to be the captain of the Blues for oh, like okay, six, right. seven years. Trevor his career long, he's been with them. Wow, this is twelve years. And he Avengers, just man. They, he wants blood. <laughs> yeah. They don't, like, they don't like each other. If he other, could and take his hockey stick and whack them all across the head, <laughs> yeah. that's what he'd do. Yeah, they, the teams don't like each other right now, and I don't know if it's because of like the bad blood from the 1970s like, Stanley Cup final is. or what, but this is one heck of a series, and I'm loving it. Yep. And, and speaking on the banner captains, you know, I, I hope that the Bruins never bring back Bill Belichick. So let's cut. <laughs> any, any other ta- things we want to mention about game one? <laughs> Overall, game, we I think we were I think we was, tooted our horn a little bit too much on game one though. But you brought up some game two stuff right just, just, just now. A little, a little yeah. great segue. Game two was, Bill, was yeah, a completely you know. opposite showing for the Bruins. If you want to even say that they showed up, because I don't think they did. Um, I'd say some of them did. Okay, that's fair. I'd say that's fair. I'd say Tuka still showed up. Yep. Jo- Joachim Nordstrom showed up. He was the best player on the ice for game two. Uh, so, and Johansson. I mean, Johansson was still good was there. that game. Um, but you know who you really noticed that didn't show up? The perfection line. The imperfection line. Are they hurt? I don't know what. I don't we, know what's we've going on. We've said it too much. We've even said it on our show from here like from the before. Bergeron, yeah. In the Columbus series, they were they didn't do much of anything until. Like game three or four? Game or? six and seven. The, the, the oh, takeaway no. game. I think it was game six, the final oh, game. They finally showed up. Game What's the deal? Because um, I'm getting a little aggravated now. I, think I bought Ber- this shirt that says perfection line, and I feel like I should just throw it out. I got a playoff Bergey shirt, folks, too, and I feel like I just wasted 50 bucks. Throw it on the oh, bonfire. Wow, wow, 50 bucks. Oh, two for sh- two? Two, for right. two shirts. Well, even then, yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm a cheap I, Yeah, man. throw it on the bonfire. No. <laughs> I think I think Bergeron's a little hurt, and you can I mean you can see he's trying his best, but the thing that aggravated me the most about Game Two was one, Marshawn with the, I don't know what's going on with Marshawn, but his head is not screwed on right. These dipsy do lolly gag, let me put on a show moves. If I were one of the Bruins, I'd take a stick and clobber him across the freaking head. Well, I don't... Like, I mean, what the not, heck are you it's, doing? It's not the moves. It's, you know... He single-handedly playing, cost them one of the goals. Yeah. Not, not knowing his defensive assignment or whatever. But, you know, you, you can't just go back in the defensive zone and see your defenseman is on one guy and go towards that same guy and, you know, leave the other guy wide open. Uh, it, it's a two-on-two. You're playing man-to-man when it's two-on-two. And people wanted to blame Chara for that play. I don't see how you can blame Chara. Well, if they watched the rest of the game, you would have known that they were blaming Marshawn for it. Um, I'm not saying Chara was perfect on that play. He wasn't. He did not have a very perfect game. No. But you but, also yeah. got to remember, too, that the Bruins played shorthanded a good two periods of this game. And they were saying that it's it's because Matt Grizzly was hurt that the Bruins lost that game. But it, it wasn't. had nothing to do with that. Marshawn had two prime chances to put the puck on that and even in the net. The one, one, one of the ones that really frustrated me was when they were shorthanded. Yep. And he decides to try to throw the puck between two defense, St. Louis defensemen that to play. Bergeron instead of putting play. on net. Yep. Because if he – and I watched the replay, and they showed it about 50 million times because they were really picking on him last night in the intermissions. Granted, they should have. Right. And yeah, I agree. It's warranted. Um, he should have put the puck on net, and – Bergeron would have probably ended up getting a rebound, and it probably would have been on a wide-open, gaping net, and that would have been the game, probably the game winner. Probably would have been. I could have um, seen that. Or, or it could have been Pasternak who got the puck kicked out to him by Gunnarsson off the faceoff right in front of the net. If you want to rank them one, two, and three in your areas of most concern, out of Bergeron, Pasternak, and Marchand, who's number one on concern? Uh, I'd have to say number one concern would be Bergeron. You go Bergeron. I go Bergeron. I go. You have a different, different listen, picking order. Because I, 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 I have, I have a different. I don't, I don't understand why he would do that. If you watch the games like I have, yeah. you understand. No, I'm I, actually surprised you say that. 
I'm surprised you what say that. that. He, the, uh, I, I wouldn't put Bergeron as my saying, number one I'm person. Saying, I'm saying Bergeron because he's the glue that holds the line well, together. He's the guy, yeah. I get, I, the I guy get that, too. To perform, and Bergeron had to too many man. shots that were on net that were straight at... Um, well, I mean, the entire team Biggington. had... Yes. <laughs> the entire team had shots. I'm more concerned on Pasternak. There is something physically wrong with him. And I, I saw it from what he's skating. It has something to do with the thumb. I still think it's oh, probably... I thought it was a rib thing. He, I don't think it is. Oh, wow. I think that he can't really stick handle right now. I think that's a big problem. You're seeing it even when he gets a pass, that he can't control the puck. And that, to me, is, say, is showing that there's some sort of an injury or concern bit from him. He's had a terrible playoffs. Hmm. Terrible playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, Martian, I think, is trying to be too cute with the puck. I think that there can be an adjustment, and I think you can get more out of him. I think out of the three, he's the most healthy. Oh, absolutely. Um, Bergeron needs to work on his shot selection. His shot selection was too straight on when he was trying to put it in net. If you look at some of his shots, if you replay from the game, you'll notice that they're right at the goalie. There's nothing in the top corner. There's nothing down low. There's no, you know, finesse kind of shot. He's more <laughs> of a, a straight shooter right now, and we're looking for him to be a little bit more creative with the puck. Well, none of them. None of the, I don't know what was going on in game two, but if you if the the big difference between game one and game two was that in game two the defensemen weren't getting as involved into the play as they were in game one. I think and a lot I of it had know, to do with they weren't as physical. Well, I don't know and. I, maybe part of it had to do with you know only running five defensemen last night, um, but I mean if you're gonna win a Stanley Cup playoff game, you want to get your defensemen involved and make sure that your forwards know that their defenseman's assignment is to you know rotate back. I have another confession that I also want to make from this too. For me, from evaluating for what I saw, at least in the past two games, I don't particularly think that the Blues are better than the Columbus Blue Jackets. I don't, but I think this series is going six games because of the physicality. I will say that I think the Blues are a more physical team than the Bruins. The Bruins' biggest strength, I think, right here is their speed and their agility work. They have a little bit more finesse on power play. They got a little bit more experience and stuff. But if you're going to tell me Bobrovsky versus Bennington, Bobrovsky was a much better goaltender. So that's why I think that this still, as much as the Bruins lost this game too, I'm not throwing in the towel. No way. No, I, I think mean, the Bruins, it's only worst two, case man. scenario, they go to St. Louis and it's what, 2-2? You come back for game five at the Garden? I could see this game being one in St. Louis in game six. That's my, that's my thought. Yeah. What do you think? I mean... Watching replays from like the shots from the net angle, from inside the net angle, yeah, I would agree. But Broski was definitely the better goalie. Is better is the better goalie because Bennington was leaving his five hole open. He was leaving a lot of a lot of the net open. It's a rookie where, goaltender that's really only been in the league since January. This is their fifth choice on their goaltending depth chart. That yeah. should tell you something. Well, it's kind of amazing they made it. It is amazing the, that they the, made the it to this final. far. Yeah. It's amazing that he's only given up four goals in two games. This has something to do with how the Blues are, though. Now, another thing that I've looked at from the Blues, they remind me, once again, so much of Columbus, but I think the Blues are a little bit more of a cheap team. Oh, absolutely. They go and they try and hit Rask after all the plays getting in the net. They got called twice on the penalties from that. Now, I think one of the things that really hurt the Bruins in Game 2 was the fact that your power play was pretty much... Obsolete. I mean, there was nothing that was happening. Their penalty kill was great, though, in both games. Their penalty kill has been their biggest strength in, in these playoff I think games. St. Louis done a nice is, job with I it. think St. Louis is over. But I think that I would take DeBrusque off the power play. I think I'd insert a Johansson or a Bacchus or somebody who's legit showing that they can score here right now. There's no question that Cassidy has to go and make some adjustments. The question here is... Are you mixing up the first line for Game 3? Well, you saw him do it a little bit in Game 2. Um, I would definitely love to see David Backus in front of the net on the power play. But the only problem with that is he's on the second unit, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, but if you take him off the second unit, put him on the first unit in place of DeBrusque, put DeBrusque on the second unit and have Johansson, the guy in front, you might actually have something going. 
I would, I would assume that Bergeron and Martian will stay together. Most likely. It's pasta that's going to be going somewhere else. You don't mix with the fourth line. The fourth line's been fine, so you've got to pick and choose what you want to do with either line two or three. I think you've got to choose from line two because line three, that's your Coyle, um, Johansson, Johansson, and Bacchus, and Bacchus and line, line has been great. So I think you've got to pick with line two. I think Heinen could be somebody that finds his slot back to the ones, and then you put Pasta back to the twos. That puts, um, who am I thinking? DeBrusque and Krejci. DeBrusque and Krejci together. We haven't mentioned Krejci's name at all here either. David Krejci had a wonderful regular season, but playoffs, he's disappeared completely. Completely. David Krejci's biggest weakness is he doesn't shoot the freaking puck. Put the damn thing on net. I've been screaming at the TV too much with when Bacchus has the puck, him and Marchand, for whatever reason, don't shoot enough, and it's got to stop. Yep, I agree. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, like, I, I don't know what else to say to that, but I, I agree. Um, but, you know, it's even like game. even Heinen wasn't playing great in game two either. I, I, don't know what's, I don't know what's going on right now, but, like, it might get to the point where Cassie just has to play the three and four line. <laughs> might have to. See, I didn't like last night how he started the first line. Start your fourth. That's your identity line. That's the ones that you're gritty, you're tough, you're fighters, you're hustlers. Put them out there. Well, the because first... the ones and the ones, if you, if, you, if you look at it, St. Louis's ones and the Bruins one line, the, the first line for the Blues is annihilated the first. Annihilated. And that should never happen. Never. Even though the first line for the Bruins played well, did play well in the in game one. You didn't really hear. I mean, Marshawn had that empty netter. Bergeron had a goal, and I think Pasternak had like two assists or something. Um, but yeah, you, you can't put. But we should be expecting more from them. Am I not correct? No. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It should be it should be like eight to one games. What do you do with Grizzlick now that he's obviously in concussion protocol? He's not going to be playing in game three. Who goes in? My thought is John Moore. Left-handed defenseman, pretty simple insert. Am I not right, or does it go to Campler? I mean, as Kevin Miller isn't ready, right? It, that's a ready. that's a toss-up. Uh, that really is a toss-up. I mean, Camper played great in that one game that he came up in to against um, Carolina, right? When yeah, uh, Bob, when Bob Charles, McAvoy when was Mark, out. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, I, I think Camper would be the better option. I think Camper is more physical than John Moore. Um, That's what you're looking for is the physicality. And you need that on, on the back end. I, I really think that Camper would be the better option right now for this series. I don't think they're going to go with it. No. I think it's going to be more. It, most likely. I mean, you also want that offensive edge too. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, you want to beat the, guy, you want to beat the other team up before you score the puck. Predictions. What do you think happens? Give me a give me a crystal ball. Well, you know what? I think it might go seven. Okay. I think it might. But I don't know much. Got a winner? I, I think the bees will pull it out. Okay. As Brett the Hitman Hart had said mm -hmm. to a buddy of mine not, in Vegas. Th this is a tough series. That's why I keep going back six and seven. But yeah. I'm saying to myself so much today that, and even looking at the game last night, they just didn't show up. The, the, the Blues took till overtime to beat the Bruins when they didn't show up. Yeah. And that's why I'm just... Well, I keep, what, do you, what do you think constituted them not showing up? What do you think was in the back of their... Maybe they felt like they had it in the bag a little bit because they ran away in the third quarter, or third uh, period? I think, I think they used oh, the excuse of Grizzlick being out as, as, as the... Because when did he as the, as the, go down? As, he went out at the end of the first period. Mm -hmm. All right. With like two minutes to go, I think it was and something it was two, like that. Two at the end I think of the they were using that as the excuse. It should have rejuvenated them. It yeah, should have yeah. brought them up more. It was 2.31 left because they got that it penalty. It should have brought them up more yeah. and said, we, let's do this for Grizz. Yeah. But it didn't. But they hate Grizz. So oh, they, they let's do. not. Well, obviously, not they showed. Grizz, I mean, they yeah. lost, so they must yeah, not have like, um, Grizz like wasn't, isn't like, a, they wouldn't consider him, I I'm guess, just, a big I, I was very surprised in how ghostly yeah. that first line was once again. Once so, he was gone or just in general? Just in general. Just in they general. weren't, they didn't show up at all. They didn't show up at all. And it was, it was having to yell, Martian, what the heck are you doing? Too many times last night. And I don't think that same mistakes are going to happen again. I just don't. I well, think St. Louis also series, is man. feeling real good about themselves well, right should. now they because they finally got their one victory. But yeah. again, 
They're one for thirteen now in Stanley Cup games. Oh, in their history. In their history. Oh, well, there you or go. one for fourteen one for, now. Yeah. One for yeah. fourteen because they were zero for thirteen after the loss from Game One. Yeah. So, I think they're going to let it get to their heads a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think the smarter, more poised team is the Bruins. Now that they know that they played like most crap, experience too. Yeah. I don't think they're going to yeah. come out and lay up a dud. Again. No, I don't think they will. And they've been pretty good on the road, actually. Well, before game before game one, too, they said that uh, the Blues only have one player on their roster that's been in a Stanley Cup game. Yeah, isn't that funny? So, I mean, now now the entire team's been in two, but you still have that one that has more experience. Mm-hmm. And the Bruins have, like, uh, half of their team. <laughs> um, what are you going with your prediction here? You've been right so many times. Are we going to continue to be you on really that have, same though. path? I really hate doing this right now before seeing what happens in Game 3. Um, I'd really like for the Bruins to win the Cup in Boston since the last time they did it, they did it in Vancouver. And it didn't end too well in the city of Vancouver. No. And I wouldn't really <laughs> like to see that happen in St. Louis, even though it probably would even, no matter where they won it. Um, you really think that the Bruins can sweep in St. Louis? I don't think they can. Is it two games or three? It's in two games in St. Louis. It goes 2-2-1-1-1. Yeah. Two, two, one, one, one. Okay. They're all different. I all feel six. Are... I just unfortunately feel like last night's game, they could have had it won at home ice. Yeah. But I just, I, I'm just, I'm at six games right now, and your sixth game is in St. Louis. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was saying five at the start of the series, but after the last, after uh, after the last game, I don't know. I, I might have to go six as well. Um, obviously Bruins. What if it goes game seven? They still win? Oh, they have to. They still they have win? To. I mean, who I, knows? I just, I can't, I can't picture a scenario where St. Louis wins. I can't picture it. Well, who knock knows? on I mean, wood, yeah. and I'm doing it right here. Look at what's happened with the Patriots. Look at what's happened <laughs> with the Red Sox. Oh, it's far. Oh, four um... Red Sox against St. Louis. Sweep them. Oh. 13. Sweep them for for baseball. Patriot wise, St. Louis Rams. You had them in two thousand one. We beat them. Mm-hmm. We just played again. Wait, did the, the LA Rams play... this time? Oh, you're right. No, yeah, the Sox played them in uh, thirteen. They right. didn't sweep them. They won no, we in... won in game six. Six, yeah. Yeah, at Fenway. At Fenway, yeah. The first time the first in ninety five years. That at Fenway. was kind of yeah. nuts. Yeah. That was kind of cool. And you actually had a closer then. Koji, you had yeah. a closer. That's right. Yeah. You're trying to get into another. No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't think it's a basketball one yeah. point, but yeah. I don't. I don't know. I, I just, I like you. I don't see St. Louis winning. I, I, I don't. I'm sorry. They've been the lovable losers for forever, and it's going to continue that yeah. way. But no. who knows? Just maybe. like it continued with Toronto this past year. Toronto is uh, the, again the losing city of the world. Well, except for the Raptors. But I mean, I don't want to your, knock on that. your segue. I mean, who, who know, I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe they come out of St. Louis tied 2-2 and the Bruins win the next two games like the last two series, or last series. No, the Columbus series, sorry. And they win it in, because uh, they, they won and that they, in Columbus, right? Yeah, yeah that's they what I thought. So, stay tuned. The Bruins will have game three Saturday night. Then it will go Monday night for game four. First day of June. Then it's yeah. three days off again. Wow, this is a little, then we uh, play Thursday of next week, which would be game five. Game six would be probably sun- Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then the final game, I believe, would be on, I think it was Wednesday. Hmm. I think they were waiting that long to do it. Yeah. But that's, wow. the game, that's what it looks like for the potential schedule for right now. So go Bruins. We hope for the best. Bad, bad second game. Got to put it behind you. You got to get ready for Game Three. Very quickly, I just want to mention the NBA Finals. I know oh, we have a quick, sure, an avid mm-hmm. Raptors fan over here. Uh, fan enough, yeah. Yes, but we haven't also talked about uh, briefly the seeds and how they kind of walked, the who? Walked, yeah, well, they walked their way out of town. But uh, yeah, I do. I like about the finals. I like the matchup. Kawhi Leonard against uh, Golden State. In the last handful of years has been a problem for Golden State. But Golden State is one of those uh, locomotives that even with their, like, not, I don't want to call them B unit because there's so much more there. I mean, the whole team is just a great organism of 
uh, great basketball. I mean, it's kind of an extension of the Popovich school of playing. Mm -hmm. You might say, why do you say that? They have KD and, you know, Curry. Well, yeah, you have Steve Kerr who played under Popovich, who's been, you know, uh, and under... Um, underrated coach. Underrated, but also he was under uh, Phil uh, Jackson as well with the Bulls. So he played with the uh, Spurs and the Bulls. And, I don't know, he's been doing... He's underrated, and he brought them to... Um, uh, a great place. I mean, the players are amazing. Clay Thompson is always the top, the, the core. Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Drummond Green, and that's kind of all you need for a if you have some other great you don't need Durant, players. Huh? Uh, for this, you might not. I mean, he. I don't think he's ready for the first game. I think he'll. I don't think he is either. For game two or three, he might come in, and you, uh, Cousins might come back, but who cares? Yeah. I mean, he. That's a great addition, but I don't know. But uh, the Raptors don't really have. They have Kawhi Leonard, Lowry if he plays well. Van Fleet is a good off the bench uh, three point um, star. Casal is kind of a shell of, of himself. Ibaka I love, but I don't know if they have what it takes to take out Golden State. But if Kawhi scores like 45 a night, you could see something kind of crazy out of him. So don't be. Uh, I wouldn't don't be, surpri su be surprised. Uh, don't be. Thank you. Don't be surprised if yeah. you go to six or seven games okay. in the series. I want Toronto. Not that I you, love that decision, but no. Uh, well, you, like you. I'd, don't, I'd uh, rather not see Toronto win the championship, but you know. Toronto oh, just as a city. Of, yeah, really? As a city. Oh. Yeah. yeah no. they destroy their they're beautiful brewing, city out there. Five. Brewing stuff it would be nice out. to see somebody take down the champs. It would be nice. Yeah, I'm I mean, getting tired of the Golden State. I real tired of it. I'm not tired of them. Yeah. I'll say that. I know. I they play great basketball. I'd rather see them just win watch. than LeBron. So you know. Sure. I mean, just look at the last uh, the Western Conference Finals. Them against Portland. I'm just gonna say before we wrap it up, we're just gonna do a 30 minute oh, yeah, edition yeah, here for the show. But if the Bruins do end up winning the Stanley Cup, you really can't ever talk about the Celtics ever again. As, well, you can, but you just... You can, but not in a good not light. in the same sentence. That's sure. the thing. For this, this year, yeah. No, it's... It's, it's crazy to it's think stupid. that you can have three championships in one year. Yeah. Should have had a four. Should have had a four. You could have had. Let it go, but we'll yeah. try our best to... We'll let it go ourselves. We'll, we'll, we'll let it go. <laughs> we'll see where... We'll just bring it up on every episode. You think they're going to blow it up? But yes, I yeah, do they think might. they're going to blow it up. They might, yeah. yeah. I'm not even sure if Stevens is going to be back. That's, I mean, that's a real thing, man. That's who knows. Who knows what happens. When you're in Boston, folks, and everybody knows it, if you don't win, bye. We will see you next time on another episode of Face to Facts. We're going to wish the Bruins the best of luck. We hope we'll be able to be with you again before the series uh, wraps up. But if we're not, go Bruins. We'll see you next time.